Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys an experiment that I have been messing about with. I had give myself, given myself the challenge of um, kind of if I were going back to my very early roots as a jewelry designer, whenever I was just doing bead stringing. And I say just doing, but truly in my heart, I still love bead stringing. It's... Um, it's very rewarding, but it's, I, I think, very beginner friendly. So that's the only reason why it's, oh, just doing, oh, this has a hair stuck in it. <laughs> um, but it's, the techniques are probably the most beginner friendly of any kind of jewelry making crafting that I could recommend to anyone. But it can be a little cost prohibitive sometimes to get into, like, maybe you want to use, like, really chunky, genuine gemstones. That can be a little bit, a little bit expensive. But using things like glass seed beads can get you some really great uh you know great looking necklaces for sometimes a relatively low overhead expense but so the materials other than the beads that you need to be able to do bead stringing like this is just your bead stringing wire which is different from wire wrapping wire because this is um while it is a metal core it's actually seven strands of very thin metal uh, kind of twisted together and then coated so it doesn't I mean it can kink if you like if you like bend it super hard it can kink but you can see it has a lot more drape to it and stuff than let's say wire wrapping wire which you can you know just do all sorts of stuff with where if I try to make a little loop like that it just brings right back out so I would never recommend wire wrapping with this kind of wire um, at least not in the traditional sense so we have our bead stringing wire we have and there will be links down in the video description to all this stuff a little very inexpensive kit that you can get on amazon of crimp beads crimp bead covers um crimp tube like uh for finishing like the wire protectors for finishing the end of a necklace or a bracelet uh in an, in basically all of the base metal tones and then something to wrap which i've done something similar to this in the past where I had like an acorn that I had wood burnt like I'd used the pointy end of a wood burning tool to burn it to make it to, to where it was like top drilled acorn and then I strung the wire through that and finished it off in the same technique so you could do that to something top drilled as well which we may go we may go ahead and do that um on this little opalite point here but I wanted to show you guys how you can do that with the groovy cabs that we sell on our website so uh, it may be handy to have some tweezers or, you know, fine tipped pliers or something, um, but really you only need something to snip it with and some crimp pliers, which you can see it's got a little like kidney bean and a little round and that's for pinching and then shaping the crimp bead and we'll get into that in a sec. Um, and then I also have, you know, the beads which you could do this just without the beads entirely just with a crimp bead it would look much more kind of bare and minimal um, but sometimes that's a really cool look to go for you can also use pre-purchased um, bail <coughs> words you can also use pre-purchased bales or components like these ones here um, this one's a sterling silver piece that you can you know, kind of attach your pendant to and then thread onto a necklace. Or you could use something like this here that you could attach it to. Whoops. <laughs> that you could attach your bail to and then attach chain or more beadwork or just however you like. It's a great way to be able to, again, with very little skill, like you don't have to be able to do metal smithing. You can just buy the pre made components and utilize them into your work. And I feel like that's so fun. <laughs> like, I, I love it. So let me clear some stuff out of the way because we're going to begin with one of our grooved cabs which is like this one here that has a little groove cut in all the way around you could also very easily do this with your own um maybe you make polymer clay cabochons you could go through and before baking you could use your wire to smush in a little groove into the edge of your stones or you could groove your polymer clay stuff just by hand with like a little file or something um so there's all sorts of different ways or we do sell these on our website backtoearthcreations.com 
Uh, and we actually have a tutorial on that page showing how to get that groove added to your order if you have any complications with that. Or you can always email us at backtruthcreations uh, at yahoo.com. Did I say that as my website? The website's just backtruth. Oh, it's all written down below in the video description, you guys. <laughs> Carrying on. Um, also, an alternative that I'll show you on this piece is instead of using some different sized beads here up at the top, you could also just use a super cute bead cap. So... What I'm showing y'all is just one of infinite ways of going about doing this. So I'm going to start by pulling off about 10 inches. That's significantly more than what we need, but I promise you it's a lot easier to work with just a bit more than what you needed than not having enough. Also, I do have a silicone earring back. I'm going to show y'all what I do with that here in a bit. And that's optional, it just it makes your life a little bit easier. Makes my life easier at least. So snipping off that. Now initially we'll come through and the first layer is just bare beading wire. Oops. Trying to do this while looking through the tripod or through the camera on the tripod. But yeah, so you can see it just nestles down in there. And it just holds on to our cap. Very similar in concept if you followed along with any of our Groovy Cab wire wrapping tutorials. Same exact concept. It's just kind of nestling in there. But we're not doing any wire wrapping. Oops, well, I just dropped that one. Where'd that go? Oh, it's tangled in my pants. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> <sighs> Trying to be all professional and straight to the point. And it's just doing as it do. So bear with me, you guys. And I'm gonna rummage in real quick. What color? Ow. I'm gonna use silver. So we have some little silver toned crimp tubes. We're just gonna pick one out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab a crimp cover. And I'm actually gonna grab a second crimp tube. You could just use your fingers by like using the pliers. So we're going to begin now by threading one of the crimp tubes or crimp beads, just whatever you have on hand. I personally like the tubes because I'm able to double layer them like I'm going to show you here in a moment. Just bringing both of the wires through the, through the tube. And then making a little lasso like that. And I'm going to nestle our cab into it. And we're going to push this down all the way. And I'm just going to leave that sitting there for a moment. It is It keeps it from like flopping about. And it still it springs back a little bit. But... That's the first step. We could, if you wanted, just crimp that and then carry on, but I'd like to show you how we're going to make our seed bead edge. Now, I recommend for this, and by no means does that mean that other bead sizes aren't going to work, I just prefer the size 11 seed beads. It, it can be very beautiful incorporating, what are these, size 6 seed beads. But the larger the bead is, the less it's going to nestle into that groove. Um, but still, it's options. And we will get into actual beading with like beading needles and beading floss uh, in the future in ways to do beaded edges for these groovy cabs. Um, then also I have so oh, there's so much dog fur on everything. Um, we have some really interestingly shaped little beads here. Those can be kind of cool. So you can definitely do more than just size 11 but I do recommend like these ones here you can kind of see I think these were a Delica's brand but these seed beads are very much like a tube like they have a really squared off corner I prefer for going around the edges on this the rounded corners because they kind of sit a little bit more flush together than just the squared off ends do and I'm not entirely certain what color this is, but it's definitely like um, an iris matte finish uh, 
very pretty though. <clears throat> so I'm going to start now by taking our silicone ear back. And if you thread on just one layer, like one thickness of the wire, it, it just slides around. So I'm actually going to thread this back inside of itself. Just there at the very end and then tighten it down. And that's going to keep all of our beads from falling off, hopefully. So the number of beads that you use is going to be fully dependent on the size of your stone as well as your own preferences. So this isn't really the kind of tutorial that it's, um, well, well that one's gone forever, um, that will be following exactly to the letter, you know, perfection, exact number of beads each time, just because I've never really found that to be the case any time that I'm crafting, even trying to replicate either my own tutorials or if I'm following along with somebody else's tutorial. These slight variations are always happening. There's always something that's going to go awry or maybe a slight variation or difference in the materials that you're using or maybe you're just not driving that well with it and you want to do something different in which case I I'm, I mostly want to just convey to y'all the core concept of what we're trying to accomplish and that way you can figure out your favorite way of getting there. So I am just threading on single seed beads and I'm doing this in real time just because you never know what might come up that might be helpful to you as a beginner. And if you all are if you are a beginner and you have any questions about anything, please feel free to contact me at backtearthcreations at yahoo.com or leave a comment down in the in the uh, like below the video description because uh, you know you can get the input of a lot of our other viewers who are very skilled and talented craftspeople themselves and uh, kind of get a bunch of opinions on whoa. <laughs> Sorry, our neighbors are having, like, a derby in the street, it seems. So, we're just going to continue threading on. And I've seen some, like, little bead spinners that are supposed to do this very quickly. I've never once been able to successfully use those without just making a downright mess. Like, a genuine, just, bead bomb, basically. So, and also this is a, a great technique for um, maybe you want to lay out a pattern and do like repetitions of colors or maybe you have different um, bead shapes or, you know, maybe alternating matte with shiny or maybe alternating um, glass with metal beads. That could look pretty cool. And I haven't really kept track at all how many beads I'm using. But I'm just using the beading wire itself as the needle. And I always find this pretty zen. Or extremely tense, just depending on the day, honestly. <laughs> Oops, there goes another one. Do, do, do. So, also, this is just the first in a line of tutorials that I'm doing that um, are taking this core design and then building it up into a super bougie necklace. So, like ultra fancy, lots of layers, but uh, I wanted to take you guys with me from the very foundational technique into, um, and we'll be making necklace, bracelet, and earrings, so a whole beaded set. So if you guys are interested in following along with that, be sure to subscribe, as well as uh, go and sign up for our newsletter on our website, backtruthcreations.com, and um, that way, because we send out newsletters every time we have a new tutorial. I think I did way too many beats. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we do a newsletter, and that way you'll get the, sh the video links sent directly to you every time we have a new video.
And then I, I pulled off our earring back and you can see here it made it like loopy. So I'm just going to snip that off. And now I'm just going to thread these two wires through our earring back. Just because, y'all, there's... I mean, I'm not going to say there's nothing worse because there's always something worse. But it really stinks to uh, be fiddling about with a project and you drop it and your beads go everywhere and you have to restring it. So that's just me, y'all. Okay. So we have our foundational like wire here that I'm actually going to set off to the side because we, now we want to see how, how our beading is going. So how many beads do we need to remove? And I like to go with fewer beads than too many because otherwise it won't sit as snug around the edges. And I had done a prototype with just this step and while it did hold securely, it did not hold as securely, like, I didn't have a whole lot of faith in it, which is why I ended up adding that second step as well, or that first layer, rather. So I'm going to pull off that, and I'm removing just that pinch of beads. Pop that. Why won't that stay down? Resist and get it twisted. Okay, so now I'm going to take this same segment with the beads on it, and I'm going to take this segment that's just the crimp bead, and I'm going to thread these wires into our crimp bead. It may be helpful to you to have used two different colors of beading wire for this. But I'm just going to position our cab into this lasso and I'm going to start by tightening it down and now we can actually grab all the wires and start pulling. If any one wire starts to get shorter than the others I focus on pulling that one and as we tug you'll want to make sure that all of your stuff is settling in nicely to the um, to the groove making sure there's no twists in anything there we go so now I'm going to do it's not perfect but that's okay I'm going to do the first squeeze on our crimp tube And so I'm coming in on the kidney bean shaped side and giving it a squish. And that's just, uh, things aren't perfectly tight, but it's holding them slightly tighter. So now I'm going to come in with my pliers and tighten things down just a little more. And I'm using my finger and my thumb to hold on to that crimp bead. That way, um, you know, it gives me something to resist against. So now, again, making sure that's nice and tight, and now I'm going to fold using the other side. Do you see how we kind of took that kidney bean shape and collapsed it in the rest of the way? And so on this one, what I had done is I'd actually fit a bead over the, uh, the crimp tube to kind of blend that in. What I'm going to be doing here to extra reinforce it is, well, first let me show you if we were using a bead cap, I would put on our bead cap. You can kind of see, so it's kind of cute. There's, it doesn't fit perfectly, but you know, it is what it is. So maybe that's something that you like. Maybe you have a bead cap that fits a little bit better. That is an option. And what we would do from here, you know, would be to do our crimp tube thread through our bail. So let me demonstrate that real quick. I'm going to grab out another crimp tube because I seem to have lost my other one. <laughs> I don't know why I pull stuff out early just to lose, but... So we 
I'm going to thread all four strands like so through our crimp tube and then let's say we wanted to use this one so again I'm going to thread all four through that loop and then we would thread all of these through again and then we would pull it like we'd thread it through into the bead cap pull it on tight and crimp but that's not what I that's not the final result that I wanted to go for but I, I do hope that that made sense to you <clears throat> close my trays before setting them off to the side anymore because uh well I've spilled one too many trays and it's made me a little tray nervous <laughs> I'd like I don't know tray shy that's what it is um so I think I want to use this component here and I just want to attach directly to it so I'm going to slide on our crimp tube which this is one of the reasons why I like crimp tubes for projects like this and if you're having trouble you can see here a couple of my wires are all more or less the same length if you stagger them like how we did here to where they're four different lengths um, I've found that makes it easier for me to thread because I can focus on just hooking one new wire at a time. But I like the crimp tubes because you can see this one fits right over. I said it fits right over. <laughs> well, it did on my last one at least. But if I smushed down this core tube, there it goes, enough, then it fits over the other crimp tube so let's see I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit the wires and the tube in so let me see if I'm able to collapse this one down a little bit more so it's already been folded once sorry about my autofocus I'm doing my best I'm going to crimp again and then smush again so that made things even tighter so now hopefully we'll be able to fit all four of these wires back through that crimp tube so again gonna thread one two three and four yeah and that nestled right down over it it does not look like we're going to be able to fit an additional um this additional group of wires onto that though. So let's consider our our alternatives. Which we could go ahead and put on the crimp cover. Hmm. Oh, my neighbors yelling at each other again. So I'm kind of thinking hmm. because we could also use one of these, which is one of those like a uh, wire protectors. Oh, I can't get it with my fingers. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but the neighbor's kids are just hollering at each other. Oh, and I hope they stay safe. They may be behaving like hooligans, but <laughs> they're like jousting on their bikes. We just, we live on a kind of busy street and I always worry because people just come flying over that hill. <sighs> Oh, 
Okay, so. We could thread on this crimp tube, which nestles very nicely over that crimp bead. And of course, we'll want to make sure that it can fit through, and it doesn't. Fantastic. So we're going to go the route with this bead cap. And so I'm going to thread on our bead cap. And it's completely optional here to do a crimp cover right there on this crimp. I am going to do that because I feel like it fills up the bell of the bead cap a little bit better. Um, ooh, though you know what might look really cool on this. Ooh, that is an idea. Um, is we could use this bead cap is appropriate for like like it fits really well with eight millimeter beads. So let's see if I don't have an eight millimeter bead that has a hole that's large enough to fit. Do I even have any beads? Here we go. <laughs> So I was looking around like, do I? Oh no. Will these guys fit? In today's episode of Will It Fit, we are going to cross our fingers and hope. I don't think this one's going to be. No, that's not large enough. But this one might be. Be super cool looking. And this would, the, oh, this would be a perfect instance, actually, to use, like, a large hold, like, lamprick glass bead or something of the sort. Ah, yes! Check that out, y'all. It fit just fine. Fantastic. So, we've threaded on our 8mm bead. And I'm going to thread this through. Oh, and I'm getting all snagged on stuff, but that's okay. Be patient with yourself too if you start to feel yourself getting like frustrated um or ha just having a hard time in general it's perfectly okay and encouraged to set down your project like walk away for a while and then come back to it either you know after like just a snack and a stretch or come back tomorrow i really like that actually <laughs> i think i like that little now do we use this component which i think is very pretty or I've been sitting on this, y'all, for about 11 years. I'm going to use this one today just because it, I think it's time. Now, also, though, looking at this, I don't know if I want to use this bead cap or I'm going to rummage. Here we go, a rummaging. Listening to the neighbor's children scream at each other. <laughs> Ooh, we could totally use... Something like this. Alternatively, again, if it had a hole that's large enough, but that would look really neat. I'm gonna set that there for maybe a future project. Here we go. Oops. So I'm gonna try it instead of with a full on bead cap, just with this little rondel. Just because I think. That might work and honestly this one's sterling silver as well and so now we can come in here oh we'll need the crimp bead though won't we so i'm going to thread through the crimp bead through our bale And now from here, I'm going to come off towards the back, just because that's my own preference to kind of finish things off towards the back side. And I'm going to keep feeding all of our wires through into the crimp tube, through the bead. So you'll definitely want a bead if you're going to be using you know, this kind of setup. You'll want a bead that can be accommodating of all of that because again right here i don't think it's gonna fit we can try to force it 
<laughs> no, that's not going to fit. So we'll, we'll use a, uh, a crimp cover down there as well. Oh, that's a shame. I really liked how it looked with the, uh, with the beads sitting there. So I am going to press everything nice and snug down to where I would like for it to go. And then again, great opportunity to use your pliers. Um, I am going to pull one wire at a time and then brace it with my thumb just to keep it from springing back out. So there we have that. And there we have that. And now I'm going to squish it down just a little bit further. Sometimes you have to do these things in um, increments. And I'm going to grab just one wire at a time. Until you've pulled all four wires. There we go. And I think that'll hang just fine. And now we're going to crimp, crimp, yes, crimp and smush, boop. And again, I start on this side. I feel like I'm not demonstrating it well, but I am doing my best. I start on the little curved side to put a little smush bend in the crimp first, and then I rotate it so that the little C shape that it made is now angled this way. And I use that round end to come in and just fold it in half. It can be a little tricky and it can take some practice, but you can do it. So now let me rummage out another crimp cover. Rummage, rummage. Oh, they're stuck together. Well, there we go. Sometimes you just have to drop it on the table and they'll jump right apart. Okay. Oh, I guess I found another crimp tube. Good gravy. <laughs> so, and I do like to close my crimp covers towards the back of the piece just in case my alignment is not that great. And I'm just going to slide our crimp bead over the crimp tube, maybe, if it'll fit. I kind of made things a little more snug than what I had intended. But, again, that's kind of how crafting goes sometimes with these things. And I like to hold... There we go. It nestled in nicely. I like to use the rounded side of my pliers. And I'm just going to come in and gently start smushing. I'm just encouraging that little gap to close. Because I don't want to just smush it flat. I'd like it for you know to look nice and round. There we go. And so there's one crimp cover. And now I'm going to go ahead and snip these wires. But I'm going to have them be finished right like in halfway down of where the... Uh, crimp tube is because I'd like for them to be contained in the crimp cover as well. So now I'm going to bring this around, nestle all those wires, and things are ooh, quite snug here. So don't hesitate to get some tools involved. Oops. You may come in set from the side on this one. Because it's just a little crowded, but that's okay. Because so long as we can just get it in there, then we can start squishing it down. And then it'll be taking up a little less space. In which case, 
we can maybe position it in a little better. Or it'll just be all lumpy and weird, and that's okay too. Especially if this is one of your first jewelry projects, don't be hard on yourself. I've been making jewelry for like half my life, and uh, I'm still having a bit of tricky trouble with this. And I'm seeing what's happening is the crimp cover is actually caught on one of the wires. So I may have had better luck actually doing this bottom crimp cover first. And maybe I can try to finagle it over and... Haha! -ha! We did it! Okay, I got it past the, uh, the beading wire. And now I'm going to smoosh it and hope that things work. Because everything's kind of come together pretty alright so far. And also this crimp cover right here is serving even further to cinch down these outer um, layer of beading. So just smushing the heck out of it. And I am going to say if you have higher quality, um, like if you have copper core or solid silver crimp covers, they are a lot easier to smush down. These are like iron core, and you can see they're getting all chewed up by my pliers, but I feel like if I chew them all up consistently, it looks on purpose. So, <laughs> something to be mindful of. And there we have our bale, y'all. We did it, we made jewelry. <laughs> and for this, I would just continue around the same exact beading, um, maybe oh, with some other, you know, let's go ahead I did not plan this at all, clearly, um, but let's go ahead and make the necklace. Now, I'm not going to do this part in real time because that's going to be a lot of bead stringing, but I am going to scoop over here a very messy, very, very messy bead tray. I cleaned it, like, not too long ago, I swear. This is the, well, this is how it goes. So I'm going to scooch all that stuff over and pretend like it doesn't exist. Um, and then I would like to include some of these little beads into our necklace design. And I also have some bead caps here. Ooh, I'm going to use these little star bead caps, kind of one on either side. So I may have more of those silver rondels somewhere. But I have these guys directly on hand, so I'll use them. And five is a oh, five is a nice round number, so I'm gonna that that'll be one, two, three, four, five. So we'll do that. Let me retrieve my pliers. And I'm gonna make this oh about an 18 inch necklace because anything longer than that we can just use extender chain. And I'm going to begin by threading on a crimp tube. And let's see. I hope I use these correctly. We shall see. Um, one of these fancy little well things that are stuck in the where do I put it here? Do, 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 do. There's one. And then I'll need one for the other end. So there's that. And then oh, I'm holding one of the crimp tubes. So I'm going to pick out three more. Because I'm going to show you guys kind of how I like to roll um, on my crimp tubing. And then for each of the crimp tubes, I'm going to want a crimp cover. So there's one, two, three, and <laughs> yeah, that's how I know they're iron cores, they're magnetic. So they're like plated iron or plated base metal or something. So where did the tubes go? There they are. So I'm going to thread through there. And then loop it over. And I will be joining the clasps with like um, jump rings. And all of the links for these materials, you guys, or at least as close to what I can find of them, in case it's something that I've had for a while, um, will be down in the video description. So 
I'm going to kind of bring those ends together, but they don't really, I don't really like that space that it's leaving. So I'm going to thread this off all the way off to the end. And I want to thread on just like some rogue beads that I have laying about. And this is the full on other end of my project. So I've threaded on the bead. I'm going to thread on to both ends. And you can see now whenever we butt that up against it. Oh, it's so blurry. Why is it so blurry? Camera, you are killing me. Okay. Um, maybe you'll focus? There we go. So you can see this bead being butted up against it kind of gradiates into the loop. Whereas now, we can thread on one of our crimp beads. holding up the far end of the wire so that it slides all the way down and then threading it onto both. So that's going to be the first of our crimp beads and so I'm going to try to get a really good demonstration of how to crimp on this one. So you can see there's a wire kind of on either side. I'm going to try to position this so that it's pinching either one wire, yeah, one wire into each side. So there you can see it's crimped and it's in a little bit of that curve shape. So now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to swish it. And these crimp tubes are a little baggy, so I like to do that again. Just pinch and swish. And you want to tug on one end and there's no movement. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm going for. So now we will take one of the crimp beads, crimp covers, sorry, and Nestle that over the crimp tube and give her a smush. Oops, the pliers slipped. Oh, and it's all crooked. If that happens, that is okay, you guys. You just come in with this round end and you kind of smush the heck out of it um, until it looks like a bead. <laughs> uh, not a pro tip for sure if y'all have any advice on how to make this look less horrible whenever I mess up on my crimp covers I mean I guess we could take it off and do it again but I'm gonna keep just powering through I'd love to hear y'all's tips and suggestions on using crimp covers and how you finish your necklaces because I bet that's gonna be super handy not just to myself but to anybody else watching who feels like browsing through the comments Okay, so we have that. I'm going to add on another rogue bead, in which case I'm going to set another one aside for later in the necklace. So I'm going to kind of scooch that out of the way. I think that might help with the autofocus. So we're bringing that down to where it's smushed back up against the crimp bead and the bead cover. And this is where I'm going to do a second crimp bead. I feel like just in case the first one didn't quite get it all the way, um, I do like to add on a second crimp bead, just cause that's, I don't know, just my preference. And on this one, I'm gonna have both the wires off to one side. I don't know if that, really makes any sort of big difference at all but so you can see there I've folded it over and it's still a little I feel like it might be a little baggy but I'm already crimped so I can't really test it so I just like to come in and cinch it a little bit more and then smush it since it's covered in the crimp cover it doesn't matter as much I don't think but the magic happens in the details so you do what you feel you need to do on your necklaces. Because really, if it holds together and it's comfortable to wear and it looks the way that you want it to look, then you did it right. Oh, that does not look like how I want it to look. Ah! Where my bent nose? There they are. So let's see if we can ah, make this worse. Um, <laughs> always. We can always make it worse. Oh my lanta, we may have to just, yeah, I'm, 
cool in that one. We're redoing that one. <laughs> Into the scrap pile for ye. It's like the bead equivalent of walking the plank. I'm going to pull out just a couple of extra because I foresee this going sideways later as well. So I'm going to say, while these are these bead covers are super affordable, you get what you pay for. So I will have a link to the ones that I actually recommend. Like, I'll have a link to the cheapo ones, too, um, for if you just want something very inexpensive and you don't mind that. Um, that they're a little bit trickier to work with, but I'll also have a link to the ones that I normally purchase. Like, I, I got this kit um, of components to experiment with to see if I would recommend it to folks and it's turning out I don't think I would. Oof. Yeah, that one is more or less inconsolable. Um, gonna smush. Haha, <laughs> when in doubt, smush it out. I think that's gonna be as good as I get it. Let's keep going. <laughs> I'm going to be keeping this necklace for myself anyways. So if I were selling it, I'd be way more concerned. Um, but so now from here, let us see. Ooh, this is where we could get kind of fancy with the different bead sizes and colors and shapes and stuff. So I have the same size 11, but then I have these that are dark green RM. Uh, glass beads by Bead Treasures, a size 6, and I'm just going to put a sprinkle of them out. And I'm going to thread, I think, 10 of these little seed beads. Whoops, just throwing them. 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, sorry, just listening to the neighbors. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. So there's ten little seed beads, size 11s, and then I'm going to do one of the size six, and then I'm going to do ten. And we could put in like a really cute, like little, if I had maybe a silver bead kind of building up between the two. That would look really neat, but I kind of am just going to use what I have directly on hand. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Yep. There's the mailman. And I'm going to thread all of this down, and I'm going to desperately hope that it will be able to fit. Oh, thank goodness. Both wires fit through my beads. Because this is how I'm going to finish the end on this end. So I don't even necessarily feel like that this is a beading tutorial, because I feel like this is still just bead stringing, just using, um, you know, beading size beads. There we go. So that's a nice little... I absolutely love doing things like this. Like if we had used... Um, like if I'd had this be a loop of beads, and instead of crimp covers, if I had used a large hole glass bead, um, this is a great way for if you have metal allergies to be able to make jewelry where there is no metal making contact with your skin. If you guys are interested in more tutorials uh, like that, please let me know and I'll see what I can do. So now to kind of gradiate up, I'm going to do another size 6. I'm going to do one of the bead caps. Now clearly if you were kind of looking for something that's no metal at all, maybe you could make your own polymer clay bead caps. Or something of the sort, or maybe some out of resin, or um, like a big, like heshi bead. I don't think I pronounced that correctly. Ooh, I think that looks neat. I 
think that looks pretty neat indeed. So I'm actually, I've let go of the concept of having this be 18 inches long. I think I'm just going to extend it with chain and just see how long this design makes the whole piece. So, and we are going to continue beading in real time because, um, again, you never know what might come up. If y'all don't feel like sitting through that, you can skip forward, um, or put it into like two times speed just in case something pertinent comes up. But otherwise, I'm just going to zen out and chat with y'all. One, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Kind of wishing I had drafted this out on my beadboard first because I think that would have been very handy in seeing that I probably could have gotten away with just doing like five or six in between, but I think this might look really nice. So there's that. Threading on our size six, picking up a pinch of beads. Oops, dropping one, dropping two, <laughs> there's one, two, three, four, there's got to be an easier way to do this, five, <laughs> Seven. My eyesight used to be a lot better. Eight, nine, and ten. Oh, that was intense. <laughs> for me, maybe. Maybe not for y'all who are like, oh gosh, good job, on You can count. <laughs> but I'm proud of me, and that's what matters. So let's get a thread on a size eight, putting on our bead cap, putting on one of our big glass beads, putting on a bead cap. Woo, y'all, we are almost at the halfway mark. And it's probably not that exciting to you, but it's pretty exciting to me. Okay, so we have that. Looking super cute. And We get to think now, how do we want this joined together? Because I could just butt it directly up to it. I think we might do a segment of 10 and then another green bead and then into the silver and then start repeating it out the other side. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I also love kind of the, the these seed beads are a little irregular, and I love that. I, I think it gives character to each of the pieces. And so I've had a lot of folks be like, this is defective. And it's like, well, no. Um, like our glass cab here. Uh, we actually intentionally include bubbles in our glass cabs because I think it gives them so much character and visual interest. If I wanted a perfectly, you know, bubbleless, you know, factory perfect cab, I'd order it from a factory. I didn't want that. That's why I make my own. So, and I love the kind of irregular. I don't know. I guess I'm a, I'm a messy burrito, and I like messy burrito jewelry, too, so that's just me. And if that's not your thing, that's perfectly okay, but, you know, to each their own. Which is why I do these tutorials to teach you how to make your favorite jewelry. Dog hair. Okay. And so now we're going to continue out the other side, and I'm going to put some more these green beads out and so there's a green bead I'm gonna get a little scoop hey to everybody watching this in the premiere I hope you guys are having a good time I know I'm having a really good time hanging out well 
okay, and I say this every time, P current Vaughn, which for you will be past Vaughn, is excited about getting to hang out with you guys in the premiere. So, and I am anticipating how future Vaughn, which for you will be present Vaughn, unless you're watching this after the premiere in which it's past Vaughn. But either way, I bet that, <laughs> I can't say that. It's be like, that bitch is having a good time. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks, y'all, for hanging out with me. Um, if you're watching this in the future and you wanted to have been watching it during the premiere, where you can participate in the live chat and kind of be legit the first ones to watch the tutorial, um, sign up for our newsletter. It's free, and we send out the streaming link as soon as, you know, as soon as it's up. Um, actually, we send it out about 30 minutes prior to whenever the premiere starts, and that way you can hang out in the uh, pre-chat as well. Because we usually, we usually premiere at noon, and we start hanging out in the pre-chat at around 11.30 uh, a.m., and that is Central Standard Time. Oh, well, I'm just throwing beads everywhere now. And it's just a nice place to, if you have some questions and, you know, you want immediate, like a direct answer immediately, um, you can contact me and I'm right there for you right then. My last count, that's six. And then seven. And eight. And then nine. I don't know about you all, but I absolutely love making jewelry. Like, it's so repetitive and, like, monotonous sometimes, and I just love it. <laughs> like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. When I'm in the mood to make a bead strung necklace, like, oh my gosh. Okay, so, like, putting on some X-Files or some, like, history podcasts. I'm just a dry person, I think. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. I'm about as exciting as, like, plain oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though. I can dig it. I don't actually like plain oatmeal. My favorite kind of oatmeal, because nobody asked, but anyways, um, is like maple brown sugar oatmeal with dates and walnuts and milled flaxseed in it. It tastes like an oatmeal cookie. Well, if oatmeal cookies weren't absolutely terrible. Randy hates oatmeal. Because I fed it to him every morning for about two years. And he was like, and at first he just didn't like oatmeal. Now he hates it. And I was like, dude, you should have spoken of it. He's like, I did. And I was like, oh, sorry. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But to be fair, we were like broke AF. And that's all we had. Because you can get a canister of oats for like super cheap. We would put blackberries from the garden into the oatmeal. Well, I say the garden, it was a, uh, we'd trespass into the neighbor's cow field where blackberries were kind of just like rambling around. And then they put up a no trespassing side. But at that point, blackberries had started to encroach into our backyard as well. Ah, oh, memories. <laughs> okay, I did put the bead on correctly. Excellent. Oh, and what luck at that. I dumped out just enough little green beads to finish off the project. Okay. Because see, and that was something that, like, we used to eat oatmeal all the time, and we used to eat bologna sandwiches, like fried bologna sandwiches. Uh... Not all the time, but it was like a treat. And Randy got super burnt out on oatmeal, and I got super burnt out on bologna sandwiches. So, but he's still, like, to this day, if I was like, hey, you want a fried bologna sandwich? He'd be like, his ears would perk up, and he'd, his tail would start wagging. <laughs> just to be clear, Randy's actually a human, but it's, like, it's, it, any, I'm just gonna. Do, 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 do. <laughs> But it's like just his demeanor. Like he would be very excited about a fried bologna sandwich. Though we have gotten kind of fancy with it lately. And I started making them fried spam sandwiches. Which is like super bougie. And we're doing our last ten. One, two, three, four. I missed both of those. Four, 
five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten. Okay, so now we're going to start repeating what we had done over here on this side. So I'm going to take a crimp tube and then one of our, I could have just used the same color of green bead, but at the time I hadn't really planned. Um, so I'm using these like kind of opalescent ones. Thread that on there. And then another crimp tube. Crimp bead. I've been calling them crimp beads, but they are just crimp tubes. And then another... Oh, that one's broken! I'll just grab another one. There we go. And now we're gonna go through the crimp tube. Not the crimp tube, whatever this thing is. If our friend Jim were here, he'd, have, he'd know exactly what these are called. He's actually the one who had recommended them to me. Jim, am I using these right? I don't even know if Jim watches my stuff anymore. If you watch this, Jim, I miss you. Do, 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 do. I lost. Oh, there it is. I was like, I've lost my crimp tube. And I gave myself way more wire than what I needed, but it was the rest of what was on the spool, so. Okay, so I've threaded through all of that. And now I'm going to start migrating it down the wire, because quite frankly, we do not need... all of this extra and I don't want to kink it all by pulling it tight through there we go so now I am oh, gonna pull that tight there we go everything looks nice and lined up I'm going to squeeze these ends together And now from here, I'm going to try to thread through at least the first 10 of these beads. Oh no, it does not fit. Uh oh. Book, book, book. There we go. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of... A little bit of snangling. There we go. Okay. So now I've found our loose end. Of the beading wire. And I'm going to try to grip it. Actually, I'm going to try to force just a little bit through. And then I'm going to try to grip it. Well, heck. <laughs> it can be a little tricky. That's okay. Okay. So I've removed a bead from it. That way I can actually grip it. There we go. As you can see, we've gotten a little bit of a kink that was just making things complicated. And now, because I do want it a little bit more secure than that, I am going to snip and then pull some and just keep threading. Or try to. Things are getting kind of tricky. That one's just a very tight little bead. But we can get we can get past it. We can get through. There we go. I at least wanted to get onto the other side of this green bead. I don't know why that's important to me. That's just what I was feeling. So I've pulled that tight. And now just pulling this down. Letting the loops spring out of it, and there we go. And so, I'm going to try to keep everything nice and not overly tight, but nice and taut. 
because if you do stuff the beads on there a little too tightly they'll get kind of like weird um the core wire will but we want we want there to be enough room for like a wiggle and a drape we don't want the beads crammed so hard up against each other that um that they stand stiff excuse me I have an allergies today and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna give it a smoosh and then I'm gonna give it a smoosh. oh I just broke a bead well that's a surefire way to have enough space I guess <laughs> we'll drag So, this one I really don't have to worry about with the size six beads, but those those with those size elevens, you can uh, just decimate them sometimes. There we go, smushing those down. And now I'm going to put some bead covers, and I sure as heck hope these work well. That'd be really nice. Just putting that out there. I feel like I've been oof, working on this all day. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to come in and smush this. Slow and steady is better than overly quick, I'm finding. So I like to get the bend started, and then I like to come and smush the tips in, because these crimp beads tend to, um, these crimp bead covers, rather, it tend to, they don't really like to go round on you like they kind of look like a duck mouth or something like they're kind of bonk, 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 instead of <laughs> there's one excellent that was not horribly disastrous Let's see if we can keep that trend going <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you just need to give a little bit of space because it can be tricky where giant meat hands don't want to go then we can just hold it with our pliers and have it still not go that's nice and this is where the crafter starts to slowly go insane uh, go pick up another <laughs> bead and hopefully this one will go oh this one fits on please yeah much better <laughs> there it goes so sometimes if throwing one of your components across the room on accident um, or intentionally might be just the thing Sometimes we have to, we sh should pick our battles. We don't have to, but we can. It's always an option. And that one is probably the easiest crimp cover I've done all day. So, oh, and I forgot to trim off our excess. So I'm going to bend in here and I'm going to get as close as we can. And then I like to take my fingernail and kind of just wiggle it into line with the other bead. And it's not wanting to go, so I'm going to see if I can't trim it down just a little further. Oops, and I stabbed myself. <laughs> stabbed myself with my snips. Hmm. Well, it's not wanting to snip off, so maybe we can s just smush it. Just smush it. Just smush it. Oh, well, there it goes. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to wrestle with this until it goes in there. So what I'm trying to accomplish here is getting this little tail end of beading wire to go inside the next bead in line, which I think would have been a lot easier 
if I were working with bigger beads. Um, oh, but I've taken a T-pin and I kind of just crammed it back into the last bead. So now we can force it in. There it goes. Into the next bead. Super cool. Okay, so the way that we would finish this, and I do not have those materials directly on hand, but we could take, I'll show you on this necklace, we would just attach some chain or some jump rings and a clasp and it would be done. So you can see that was my crimp covers. We would just put some jump rings through it. Let me see, because I really would rather just demonstrate than be like, good luck, and then leave you there with that. I'm gonna open up the thing to chain. I'm gonna run it from it. Okay. Ooh, here's some nice chain. Now this is about the size that I would use for like some extender chain to hook the clasp onto. Where's my chain? Oh, goodness. Better stretch. Okay. There we go. We'll use this. So this is a big old thing, a bulk chain from the Ring Lord. And this is their, I believe, their 20 gauge. And then I'm going to be using a kit from Rummage Rummage. There we go. American Chainmail. This is their aluminum ring sampler kit. Has some of my favorite ring sizes in there. And then I'm going to be using just one of these 7 by 11 millimeter lobster claw clasps. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to measure off the necklace. This is exactly 12 inches way too short for a necklace necklace so if i want it to be 18 inches then i need about three inches of chain on each side because 12 plus 3 is 15 plus 3 is 18. so i'm going to take this and i'm just going to snip and snip always do that to kind of Try to not get yourself in the eye with it. And then the rings that I'm going to use are the 18 gauge 1 8 inch are my favorites and I'll need three of those. One for attaching the clasp to the chain and two for attaching the chain to the rest of the project. And then I get these pliers from Rio Grande, my little uh, stepped nose pliers. I always get a lot of questions about that. They're my favorite for doing little and big chainmail, honestly. So I'm going to open up one of the rings, hook it onto the chain, and then hook that through the wire protector so it comes together just like that. And when you close the jump ring, you want the ends to be as like close to each other and flush like you're trying to make it look like a completely soldered ring, like continuous. So, and whenever I open the rings, I like to just open it up just like that. And I'm going to hook the chain on, hook it through that, and then close it. And I test it with my finger, make sure there's no pokey bits. And then, oh goodness, I thought I, there it is. I'm going to pull... The third ring, open it, hook the clasp on, and then hook that onto the chain, and then close it. And now for our extender chain, I usually for myself I like to add four or five inches of extender, so I've measured that off. I found the ring that I want to be the last one, and I'm going to open that, 
remove the rest of the chain. Now this is the uh, 19 gauge from the Ring Lord, their 19 gauge wire in enameled iron. And that way I can hook the clasp on wherever I like along that extender. And oftentimes I'll put like a cute little charm or something there on the back side. But that is a necklace, y'all. One of many, many ways to make a necklace. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I do hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Um, you can also email us, like I had mentioned before, at backtruthcreations at yahoo.com, and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation with more of them, uh, please consider joining our Craft Along Club. Or joining us for one of our Monday shop updates where we sell wire, cabs, handmade beads, all sorts of different things. We do that every Monday. And again, if you sign up for our newsletter, you'll get notifications about all that stuff as well as exclusive coupons. So we will see you guys in our next tutorial. And until then, y'all, happy crafting. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>